today is a video that I've been wanting to go over for quite some time now. Ever since I pulled the Monster Ram off the truck, I wanted to kind of touch base on the two major stock components that are coming off after you do that upgrade, right? Here we have the stock intake horn and the stock intake plate, okay? So what makes the bank so much better? Well, there's several things, and the one key thing that made it very good for me to make it one of something I wanted to purchase and change out was on the intake plate, right? This guy right here. As most of you know, this has been killing many Cummins engines out there. And what's causing it is this right here, the grid heater relay attachment position for the cable. This right here, right? As you can see here, it's a solid plastic piece. Cable bolts onto here with a stud. And then on the reverse side, there's a stud on the back side of this plastic piece where the cable attaches to that comes over here and goes right there. And there's a nut, and then this nut heats this up, which in turn heats up this entire grid heater. What's been happening is a lot of people around 100,000 miles have been seeing catastrophic failures. And I'm sure some of you have seen this on Banks Announcements and I've read it on a couple forums. What's going on is with the heat, all the soot cooking or the soot coming in here from the EGR, this nut is failing. Or, I'm sorry, the stud is failing, which in turn, after it fails to a certain point, it falls off. It's in this position here. So, so cylinders go from one through six. The stud falls off, goes into the intake, and goes back to cylinder six, which in some situations cracks the pistons and becomes a catastrophic failure and it can cost several thousand dollars to, to repair. Now, that gave me major peace of mind. I plan on having my truck for many, many years to come. I hope to get well over 100,000 miles out of the truck. Not having this in there, I know I do not have to worry about it. As you already know, the bank's plate, this is all gone. It's just an open hole, flows air right inside. If you want to check this on your truck and you're kind of worried this might be happening to you, what you can do, go under the hood. The plate will be in this position. If you're looking at it from the hood of your truck. You can grab this piece of plastic and try to wiggle it. If it moves, that's a problem. Do not use your truck and figure out a way to fix this. Whether you stay with the stock part or you get the bank's aftermarket parts and replace it. But if you have any play in this whatsoever, that's a problem. That means something's going on back here, whether that is the nut is coming loose, the stud that is molded into the plastic is beginning to unmold itself and get loose and want to fall out. There are several, th several reasons, but if you have any play in this whatsoever, do not drive your vehicle, okay? Save yourself the money, save yourself the hassle, and get it fixed. If you guys need to check your grid heater bolt, this will be a little different. This is the, with the monster ram, okay? Here is your cable. This will be bolted down below on the stud I showed you in the previous video. If you grab your cable, if you can wiggle it, like I mentioned, you have a problem. Stop what you're doing. Do not drive your truck and get it fixed, okay? This right here is what you're looking for whenever you go to check your lead and your terminal at your grid heater plate. If it shakes like this, this is a problem. So get it fixed immediately. Now, that's the key reason. That's the main reason that I wanted to do this was because of this failure here and now I'm not worried about it. The other thing was performance, of course, right? Everybody wants better performance. So here's a stock horn. It's a very straight shot. There's really no curvature here. It is forcing the air to come in and it hits the scoop here. And if you can, you really can't see because of all the soot that's in here, but it's a very unnatural flow of air. Now, I can't really tell if you can see that or not. As the air comes in, it comes a straight shot, hits this wall and then push and it shoves down into the intake. The Banks Monster Ram, as you already know, is much larger. It provides a nice curve, rounded area to really allow the air to flow with no back pressure issues. 
comes in, flows over, goes right into the intake, and it just flows a whole lot more air. It's a much bigger apparatus than this. On the Banks Monster Ram, I can fit my entire fist on this side of the port where you bolt on the throttle body. I can fit my entire fist inside that, and I cannot do that here. So that alone itself shows you that it flows a whole lot more air. So with that being said, it looks a lot better, of course, too. Aesthetically, it's much, please, much more pleasing on the eyes. It allows for much more airflow, and it saves you from having that huge failure that people have already had and had to pay for dearly. And sometimes they even lost their truck because of how much the repairs were going to cost. That in itself is worth it for me. I hope this helps you guys make a decision. If you have not, this could be something that, you know, it may cost $1,500. However, I guarantee you, if you leave it on there, and, you and you, especially you guys that drive your trucks for a living, doing hot shot, cross country traveling, whatever the case may be, if you use your truck every day very often, this would be a very beneficial upgrade for you because you'd be getting much better performance out of the vehicle, much better airflow, and this is gone. You're, this is just a ticking time bomb waiting to just grenade your engine, okay? Just for that peace of mind there, $1,500 opposed to ten plus thousand dollars or even much farther than that if you have to replace your engine, it seems like a drop in the bucket to me, right? <coughs> I would much rather pay the $1,500 opposed to several thousand dollars to replace my motor because this failed. That's what I got for you today. I'll give you all a quick update on some other stuff real quick. Now, as mentioned in the previous setting, this just, this looks, aesthetically, this is way better, right? Especially, I got, I got this from Color Match, as you guys already know. The grid, there's the new upgraded plate right there, free-flowing, much better curvature here, as mentioned. Don't worry about that. We'll go over that soon enough, okay? But, here we are, a little sneak peek. If you have any questions about the stock heater, let me know, stock plate, whatever you have, even if the bank stuff, all of you guys that have commented on my previous videos, especially the install video, that video is providing is doing very well and providing me so much feedback on a lot of stuff. I love it. Keep the comments coming. Keep the questions coming. I try to reply to everybody. And I look forward to seeing what else you guys have to ask. All right. Talk to you in a minute. We got some future content coming your way, guys. I'm not sure if you can tell what this pretty little piece is here. We did another upgrade on the truck. My next video will be going over these components in correlation with these components. We just did a cover of these, but I'm gonna show you an entire setup and system of the EGR system, how to unbolt it, where, every, where all your bolts are to get it out of your truck for maintenance, whatever you have to do, okay? Really cool update on its way. Stay tuned for the next one.